friends, what is going on? My name is Rabbit and I want to extend the warmest of welcomes to you as you join me for our bonus exploration of the post-game content here in Jade Cocoon 2. In our last episode, we were blindly making our way through Fire Heat number 4. We got into a fight with another Og Beast Hunter. That's the second one we've encountered during this batch of episodes. So that brought us to an odd number of Og medals. Therefore, we did not end up getting a prize as a result of getting that new medal from him but I will say just defeating him was prize enough because it's been a bit of a challenge you guys we have lost a couple divine beasts that we've somehow been able to pull back out of nowhere but life has been rough on this side of the fence so we will just keep going I was personally sharing with you guys kind of just some history behind a friend that I had about nine years ago who recently reached back out to me and it'll make more sense why this is so perplexing and taking me a bit aback and catching me a bit off guard just because it's been so long and my relationship with her although I'm reluctant to use the term toxic to describe our friendship I think that's probably the most appropriate because she was nuts you guys so I shared with you guys that I was very involved in my international community during my undergrad, our international like programming that the university offered. I did a lot of things for the school and for people who were, you know, fresh off the plane, whether they were from an area that already spoke English fluently or they were completely new to everything and needed to take ESL and all that good stuff. So I met Lily through a friend because I had become somewhat close with this girl who was from China and you know she just kind of connected us at an event that we were at I don't know if she thought we'd be good friends or if for her it was more just like oh well you two might at least have enough in common just to entertain each other at this four hour event so maybe they weren't necessarily expecting us to hit it off but we did and our crazy frayed ball of yarn friendship began. So Lily had a rough upbringing and a rough start as I was beginning to share towards the end of our last episode and that her arrival to the U.S. was the result of her basically being passed from family member to family member and there were money exchanges involved in some of this. So I like to just call it as I see it. I would say she was sold. Basically the the biggest bitter ended up getting her and she served as kind of a babysitter for random family and she just you know she truly I think endured a lot more than some people could even fathom being a reality it's you know and I would say I had kind of a hard upbringing in in a lot of respects things that I don't even like talking about and I have never shared with anyone and I don't know if I'll ever reach a point where I want to talk about it but there's something to be said for coming from true poverty where, you know, you are surrounded by a lack of electricity, a lack of running water, a lack of access to certain other resources. And and I just I've seen it, lived it, have family that's still living it. And I know her life was still even worse than than a lot of things that I had to face. And and there are still things that I try not to think about. So I think I like to give people credit where credit is due. And for her, her life truly was horrendous. And I think she's put in a position to where no matter what choices she makes, no matter how hard she works, I think she's always going to have certain, certain weights on her ankles. That doesn't mean she cannot overcome the obstacles or the hurdles that get thrown at her. I think everyone has the ability to overcome their odds, regardless of your story. But her odds are, are pretty high. But I had heard someone tell me once that, and I, I do believe this, and I feel like I've lived it, basically. But I heard someone tell me once that it's not, it's not the cards you're dealt, it's the hand you play. And I might be saying that somewhat off, but you guys know what I mean, that, you know what? Yes, you might have a shittier start than most other people. Maybe you have the shittiest of starts. And maybe because of that start, you will never end up being like a millionaire or you won't end up with 
everything in your youth, like it might take a lot longer to get where some people are able to reach by their 30s, but you can still make mindful choices and thought, take thoughtful steps that will bring you closer and closer to your goals. So with all that being said, I just, I guess, wanted to sort of paint for you her background as being one that was very tainted. I think because of that, she had major trust issues, she had abandonment issues, and she didn't have a lot of friends, nor did she really have a lot of family that was even in the U.S. And for people that she knew in the U.S., she she just didn't trust them because they were involved in a lot of the sketchy stuff that brought her here in the first place. So in high school, she even lived with her high school I think it was one, was it the high school nurse? She lived with someone who was actually on staff at the school. She wasn't living with a host family or with like a distant relative just because her life was so fucked up. Someone at her high school stepped in and was like, I'm not going to foster you, but you can stay with me. I can just get guardianship until you're 18. We're just going to do this because you have to finish high school. Your life is a mess. So someone did that for her and then helped her significantly with getting into her undergrad, albeit I think she started a bit later, I think. Because I graduated before her and she's two years older than me, so I don't know. My timeline's off a little bit because there was, I'm sure there's some backstory to her that I'm not remembering or things that she never told me, but whatever. All you need to know, things were stacked against her, to be fair, and just to give her credit before I even go into everything. So with all that being said, my relationship with Lily, as positive as it was in some regards, was so horrendous in a myriad of ways. One of them being that she was incredibly manipulative because she had such a bad life up until that point. And even in the day to day, she, I felt like had more bad luck than most people. So just as kind of like a funny memory, I remember there was one time she and I were walking through the downtown area of where we were living and there there was this this guy that was interested in me and he had a friend who was super drunk and of course I was like no even though Andrew and I I was what 19 maybe 20 at the time Andrew and I weren't married at that point but I met Andrew when I was 15 we've been together the whole time so I always was was a good girl in that respect even though Andrew stayed in Arkansas for his undergrad and I moved to Kansas we still were exclusive we still made it very clear to people like hey I'm in a relationship not interested sorry we can be friends though but this guy basically told me he's like well you know I hear what you're saying but I think you should at least get to know me Uh, it's not good to shut out options so I know I humored him in that respect and so the four of us ended up sitting at this table outside of a coffee shop he bought us all like a cup of coffee and Lily herself (gasps) they killed my whole row this <gasps> what the fuck? You guys, that is bullshit. My whole row. I don't even know what to say. Uh, uh, what? Y'all, what is this? Oh my gosh. I have to pause on my story so that I can get some shit going. What the fuck? I hate the instant death stuff. And I can't believe this low percentage garbage spell actually worked. And he killed... Wow. Wowie. Wow, wow, wow. I don't even know what to say. Do I have enough to bring... I don't have enough to bring one person back. That's not good. That's not good at all. No, no. Oh my God. It didn't work. Oh, yeah. What the fuck? I need to try to put them to sleep. Guys, this fucking game. I love the competitiveness sometimes, but then there are moments where it's just like, how? These are such hacks such fucking hacks it just makes me want to strangle somebody but it's all good i just want to get my team back together so i think one more round of this i'm gonna switch it back up i kind of wonder if i should kill one of them first though because i really really don't want to deal with any nonsense 
but this might just have to be how it goes. Please, 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 please. Okay, there's one of three that needs to make a return. Oh, thank God, okay. I actually, I can get one more off. We'll see what this looks like. Oh my gosh. Guys, how is this even a thing? <sighs> Such trash. Such fucking trash. But I think we're to the point now where it's fine. It is what it is. I'm going to have to kill one of these. I might have to kill both of them and just one person's going to be missing out. But I don't really know what else to do about it. So... You know, that's just how the cookie crumbles. I don't have enough mana. I guess I could use my last... God, you guys, look at this. I have one resurrect book. Do I want to use it now? I guess I will. Might as well. Fuck. <laughs> Why? Why is this area so hard? I don't think I'm going to be ready to actually deal with the final boss here. I have no resurrect books now, so if I don't have enough mana to bring people back, I, I might just be fucked. And knowing that the sudden death thing is such a popular choice around here. Oh, this game. Okay. Anyway, Lily. Kind of crazy. Had a rough start. Loved her anyway because we, we vibed super well regarding our perspective on things and the fact that we did have a similar upbringing in a lot of respects. <sighs> I don't... How? I didn't even touch him! Are you kidding? That is total trash. Oh, if I can just get some poison off, that'd be great. Hey! That's as good of a start as I think you could ask for. All right, so if I can rotate and get a heal off or two. <sighs> My God, you guys. What the fuck? Well, at least they're starting off by not using their mana. But that's only going to last so long. Fucking end my suffering. Please get both of them to sleep. Please get both of them to sleep. Oh, you missed one. Oh, but they stunned. I will take it. So, guys, this actually might not be that bad. I'm going to try again. Okay. I think I'm in the position to where I could talk more. So, things that ended up being red flags for me about Lily. She was very manipulative because of the fact that she had suffered so greatly for so long. If there was something she wanted and she didn't have money for it, but I maybe had a little bit of extra savings. Because, again, keep in mind, I worked the entire time I was in my undergrad. And I was a triple major. No! No! Please have this bullshit miss. <sighs> Such trash! I, I cannot believe this is a spell. Fuck this game. Anyway, so she was very manipulative and would sometimes make me feel guilty and be like, well, if you have any extra money left over, you know, you should share it with me because you've... What? Stop this. This is not cool. This is not cool at all. And it ends here. Oh, I don't know if I can have it end here, actually. It ends here on this side. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at my fucking team. We're so busted. So that was just one thing that I ended up buying her a lot of things. And, and you know, I never expect anything back. Like, I believe in genuinely giving from the heart and helping out people in need. So, you know, if she needed something, whatever. It's my pleasure if I have 200 extra dollars at the end of the month. I will gladly give that to you so that you can pay a bill or that you can afford, I don't know, something that you need to add to your apartment. But this was something that went on for years, you guys, where I was very frequently footing the bill for things that only benefited her. Again, not even a big deal. If that was kind of the only thing, then I'm sure I'm sure I would have dealt with her shit for longer. But there were other things, too, where she didn't like choices I'd make if I wanted to hang out with other friends without her or if I wanted to go do something without her. Just even something as simple as, I just feel like going grocery shopping, Lily. I just want to go buy my own stuff. But she would always want to go with me if she knew I was doing things like that because I would often end up buying groceries for her as well. And keep in mind, it's not like we even live together where you could maybe say, well, she wants to be there to throw in her input. No. 
No, 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 no. It was not even like that. She just did not like me. Oh, hang on. If I can get him from behind, that is going to make this so much better for me. If he turns around. Perfect. There we go. It was really just a control thing and her not wanting me to have a life outside of her. She really wanted the two of us to be friends. And that was kind of it. She didn't want me socializing outside of her. She didn't like me traveling without her. She didn't like me doing anything without her. As weird as that sounds, like thinking back on it, it didn't seem that strange at the time because I just felt it was more of a relationship where she needed me and I was her best friend and I understood her in a way that a lot of our peers kind of didn't get. So, you know, I made excuses for her and other people said, oh, I don't really like Lily. She's not very kind. She's super competitive. She treats other people badly. And I would always, always defend her. And I'd say, well, you guys just don't understand. She, she's coming from a place that is beyond most people's comprehension because we haven't had to survive the things that she survived. We only read about the things that that she survived or experienced a fraction of those those troubles and, and those trials. So I, I always made excuses for her and people were like, okay, if you want to drink that Kool-Aid and, and buy into her bullshit, you go right ahead, rabbit. You go right ahead. And I definitely... I think I enabled her a lot because I never held her accountable for things. So if I asked her to do something for me, it would never, ever get done. And there was always a reason for it. Always an excuse. So I had to do this or I'm depressed today and I need someone to talk to. And that was another thing. Whenever she needed anything, I was expected to be there. So if it was 2 in the morning and she was upset and wanted someone to talk to, and again, it is my pleasure to be able to do that for someone every once in a while. If you're having a bad day, I'm so sorry. My first class isn't until 10 a.m. So I can come over and as long as I get like four hours of sleep, I'll be fine. I'll come, I'll sit with you up until sunrise and we'll cry together. You know, I'll hug you, I'll make you some cookies and it'll be good. I really tried to be not only a good friend to her, but like I was sharing with you guys earlier, I think I was looking for like a, a mother-daughter relationship because it was missing in my own life. So, you know, I acknowledge that my part in this was that I enabled her far beyond what I should have. And after the first year of dealing with her shit, when other friends were saying like, oh, you really need to not be friends with Lily anymore. She's not treating you very well. I should have listened to them and I should have acknowledged like, yeah, I'm really only staying in this because... I, I need the contact, not because it's necessarily good for me or it's even something I want. So our relationship was very back and forth in that there would be good seasons and then absolutely horrible seasons where there was one point where she took a lot of money from me. I, you know, I was, I guess you could just be blunt and say unwise in that I didn't hide things from her. She knew not necessarily passwords to things for me. That is something I have never fallen for. Even people that act like they're super sweet and cool, I've never shared passwords to like bank accounts or accounts that are in any way tied to money. If I give someone like a password to, I don't know, like an email I never use, it's just like a, an email that I have for signing up for cards or like raffles or things like that. You know what I mean? How like if you sign up for some sort of rewards card at Old Navy. Like, you want a bullshit email to give to people, right? Like, if someone gets that email, it, there's really nothing in there. There's nothing you can do to me by having access to that. But I've had people ask, like, or imply that I should be willing to share, like, my bank login info or even my YouTube. I've had someone say that to me before, and they're like, oh, well, I can help edit and upload something for you. And it's like, ah, no thanks. Even if you mean well, People are crazy. People change at the drop of a hat if you don't do what they want you to. I just, I'm not, I've never fallen for that. And I know some people have. So, you know, mad props to people who have that much faith in humanity to where you're willing to take that gamble. That's never been me. So I'm glad that that wasn't me either because she had seized an extra... I think it was like $300 that I had in a sock. So she knew that I would sometimes get cash. So the job, one of the jobs that I had during my undergrad was I was a nanny. And even though they mostly paid me in checks, some weekends they would just hand me 
cash because they had so much money and I feel like I've talked about them before so I don't want to make this story about them but they were also fucking insane and had way more money than they knew what to do with I still don't understand why they needed a full-time nanny borderline a live-in nanny but you know whatever not not my problem anymore Oh, God. Okay, that had me nervous for a second there. I was like, oh, what's this delay about? So I had received about, it was like 300, if not 400 extra bucks. Let me actually put this on Conwell. That I had stuffed into a sock. So just a couple extra hundred. And I don't know why I never thought to keep that a secret, but it just, it just never struck me as something I'd have to hide from someone. So I didn't. And she knew that I had this sock. That kept all of my cash. And sometimes there wasn't much in there because I would drive to a nearby city and deposit it because my bank wasn't in the town where we lived. So I had to drive, oh gosh, 30 minutes? It wasn't that far. And I'd make it like an afternoon trip where I'd maybe go shopping or treat myself to lunch or something like that. But anyway, she knew that sometimes there was nothing in it. But there was one afternoon where I had put a couple hundred bucks into this sock and put it in that spot. And I told her I was going to be gone for a few days. I had something. I don't even remember what was going on. And I came back and all of the money. It's not even like she took a hundred and left the rest. All of the money was gone from my sock. And of course I confronted her. She's the only person that would know what happened to it and like when you think about it no one's gonna break in and just take my sock money that doesn't happen this is not a thing so i confronted her in a nice way where i was just like oh lily you know i was planning on making the trip and so the nearby town was called uh junction city where i would go to my bank to deposit cash i was like i was thinking of going to junction city um if you wanted to come with me you could and we could maybe have lunch and just hang out for a little bit but all of my cash is gone from my sock. Do you know where my cash is? And so then she, you know, and she would never just open with like a humble statement of, I'm so sorry, I meant to text you or I meant to call and ask, but I had a bill that I just had to pay. I like, and here's the other thing about it too. I was stupid and she had keys to my apartment. And in, the, in that sense, it wasn't too bad because you know, sometimes you want, to have a friend who can come and look after things for you while you're gone or you know they just you want them to feel comfortable coming and going at their leisure and again like I said I didn't have anything so valuable that it really would have been that big of a deal for her to have access to my greatest I guess the greatest things that I owned were all digital so as long as I had protected my passwords and I did I never had any passwords written down I wasn't too afraid of her coming and going looking for you. Huh? What for? Um, I took a job asking anyone to defeat you. So you took the job? A job from the bulletin board, right? Blame the others for your fault. Good for nothing, beast hunter. Oh well, I did want to fight someone with a backbone. <laughs> Ready now? <laughs> oh, hey, this is kind of cool. So... I guess we'll end up finishing up the okay, the job. Are you ready? Here it goes. I'm not sure how this is going to turn out for us though, but we're going to give it the good old college try. You got Oh no. It seems looking a little scarier than it has in the past, but it should be fine. Anyway, so Lily had a key to my apartment. I guess I should have stated that before saying got home, found my sock was gone. So next time I saw her confronted her about it she wasn't even humble about it where she was like i just had a bill i really need needed to pay i was over making sure everything was fine at your apartment rabbit and made the the mistake i guess of thinking that i was only going to borrow a few dollars but i ended up taking all of it i'll pay you back like that's what i mean i wouldn't take someone's money without asking in the first place but let's say i did take someone's money and i forgot to text them for whatever reason like let's say i don't know i had a light bill I mean, you wouldn't still need hundreds of dollars, whatever. But just to give her some credit, I guess, or trying to think from that line of thinking, if I had something pressing, I, maybe there is a chance I would take the money and just think to tell them next time I saw them, especially if their lives, my life was as intertwined with theirs as Lily and my lives were intertwined. So, you know, just with that suspension of belief and faith in place here, 
contextually, I still think it's odd, but whatever. I wish she had been a little bit more humble in her approach, but instead she was just like, well, you know, I, I know that you always say if I need something, I can just have it. So, you know, I, I'm not saying that it has to be a gift or anything, but I really needed something and you were gone and I didn't want to bother you because I know how busy you get when you're away and how you don't like to be interrupted. Basically, she turned it into a thing where she put it on me and basically said, I am not easy to reach when I'm gone and she knows how I don't like to be contacted when I'm away. So she did it for me by not telling me ahead of time. Anyway, she was just very defensive and bitchy and found a way to insult me even though you're the one who took my money and I never got that money back, by the way, which... Again, it's fine. You know, if she had asked, I probably, as stupid as this sounds, would have given it to her anyway. I more than likely would have been like, you know what? She obviously needs it more than I do. It's fine. Like, I could use it. I earned it. It's mine. But I want, I want my friend to be happy. And I want my friend to be okay. So if it means buying her love, as desperate and stupid as it is to confess, I was willing to, I was willing to make that sacrifice of myself and put up with her shit for the sake of our weird back and forth friendship. It, I know, it doesn't make sense, you guys. It didn't even make sense to me really at the time, but I just kept trying to see, I, ch I kept trying to see it, you know? The, the beauty in this, this mishmash puzzle, and I just so badly wanted us to have something. No, Nam, it is not over yet. Stop with this, you're breaking my balls. I am not feeling this petrification crap. But as long as he doesn't have the sun death shit, you know, I really can't complain too much. So, you know, that's just another example. Not only was she just super manipulative and demanding of my time and, and my resources, but she kind of lied sometimes and she stole from me. If you want to call it stealing, because, you know, when you ask her, she'll tell the truth, but she would never offer the information up initially. So, uh whether that technically qualifies as lying, I'll leave that to you to decide. Master, I have lost. That's right. On them knees, Nam. On them knees. Perfect. We'll see what he has to say, and then we'll call it a video. Not bad, Kahu. You are a good rival. What are you happy about? Ugh, that's weird. You're an odd one. A battle's not a fight. When you meet a good opponent, that's just great. Hmm. Wonder what the opponent thinks. Maybe he'd be pretty angry. I swear, I don't think anyone knows what anyone else is talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna challenge him next time. I got train first. Well, Nam took this pretty well. I would be a little pissed, not gonna lie, if someone came to to fight me as revenge for someone else. But anyway, so that's kind of the backstory behind all of the weird inner workings of my unhealthy relationship with Lily, just in that she was trash to me, but I needed her because I was needy and it was nice to have an older female friend that I could sometimes rely on to not judge me when I want to bounce ideas off. I don't, actually, I really don't know what I got from that relationship, but that's kind of the, the backstory. So I will share with you guys sort of what's going on now because she did contact me recently and I'm not sure what to do about all this but we will save that part of the story for our upcoming episode so thank you very much for watching I am your host rabbit and this is our playthrough of Jade Cocoon 2 where we are now focusing on the post game content as a bonus section to this let's play so thanks as always I'll see y'all soon